Dogs experience a broad range of cancers with approximately one in three dogs diagnosed with cancer during its lifetime and 50% of dogs over the age of 10 dying from or with cancer. Is this genetic or are our food and lifestyle choices impacting as much on our dogs as they are on us? To help answer this question, I'm very excited to be joined by Dr. Karen Shaw Becker. Thank you so much for joining us today, Karen. This is very exciting. Now, obviously, these numbers that we are talking about here are very similar to what we're experiencing in human population. Are the causes the same? Indeed, the causes are incredibly similar. In fact, when we interviewed the top gen human geneticists and oncologists, as well as canine geneticists and oncologists, they told us the same thing. For humans, about 90% of cancer was because of environmental dietary, you know, our lifestyle influences, 10% being genetic. For dogs, it's about 80% diet and lifestyle and 20% genetics. So that 20% genetics is more so for dogs than for people, partly because we have inbred them. And humans are responsible for what we call gene deletions, which are just dogs that are missing the DNA for healthy, thriving bodies. And so that's the big issue. The benefit and the blessing is that out of this, because of epigenetics, we actually have the ability to up and down regulate some of the DNA that dogs have been given that we may not want to have expressed through wise lifestyle choices. So there is hope. Our dogs, they can't speak to us. I wish they could. Um, but, you know, this means that often we're finding out about diseases and particularly cancer that they've got much later in the day than what we might in a human. So what are the treatments for dogs and how do they cope with it? Dogs are perpetual optimists. They're always happy. And so one of the things I have to say as a proactive wellness veterinarian is that it really is up to us as the guardians to check, even though they look magnificent on the outside, we have to do our due, our due diligence and check their internal organ function on an annual basis. By us checking how their kidney and liver functions doing with simple blood tests, we're able to actually determine if those enzymes are out of whack, we can determine why is that, including potentially cancer. But there's also some other additional screening tests that we can use that demonstrate uh, if animals or dogs are carrying genetic markers or genetic predispositions for cancer. But also there are some cancer markers now available with simple, easy blood tests and urine tests that we can do. So we do want to do our due diligence because if our animals are dealing with the onset of cancer, it's so much easier to help them through it the earlier that it's diagnosed. If we're waiting for our dog's bodies to give us symptoms and and then begin treating or identifying cancer, oftentimes it's too late. So the treatment is very much the same as people. We can do surgery to remove the cancer. We can do radiation and chemotherapy to try and help. But our point of best power is really in identifying abnormal changes early and making sure that we're doing all we can to prevent cancer from occurring in the first place. Well, there are some key preventive strategies actually that are really important. And when, when I went to the Broad Institute, the top epigenetic triggers both for people and dogs, or many of them are what you think, nutrient levels in food. So whether the food has enough nutrients or not, polyphenol levels in food, which are those bioactive molecules that specifically help minimize oxidative stress, uh, chemicals in food and or lack of chemicals in food. Chemicals, of course, have the potential to change DNA and can be damaging to our dog's body. Physical activity is a given. We know that exercise is a powerful tool or potentially lack of exercise contributing to abnormal cell growth. Stress is a given. Obesity, obviously. Pesticide exposure, heavy metals. Those are found in a whole variety of different sources in the water, in the foods that we're feeding. Um, and then endocrine disrupting chemicals, which comes from things like plastic water bowls. Uh, and then particulate matter, which is basically secondhand smoke and air pollute. So all of those 11 steps are within our control in the sense that we have the list, we can identify our dog's susceptibility, and then we can do something about it. Now, we obviously know that a complete and, and balanced fresh raw food diet is something, you know, I'm very passionate about. You obviously are as well. Um, but not everyone is able or willing to feed that. What can they add to really boost their dog's system and potentially, hopefully, ward off that cancer? 
Well, one of the things we know and that every researcher we talked to was very clear about is that dogs have a very high DHA and EPA requirement, which means they need a lot of those omega-3 fatty acids coming from primarily seafood that naturally not just help maintain skin health and brain health, cognition, but actually really critical for immune health as well as managing inflammation. And most of the top researchers we talked to, they were very clear that most cancers start as low-grade festering inflammation. Yeah. So just adding in omega-3 fatty acids at the time of feeding is a really important step. And that in and of itself is a dramatic improvement to ultra processed food. The second thing I would have everyone think about is what, what are we doing for gut health? We know that actually our dog's largest immune organ is the small intestine. And so by us nurturing and caring for our dog's microbiome, we can in turn make gut resiliency stronger and in turn their immune system stronger and more resilient. So thinking about probiotic foods, thinking about foods with high prebiotic fiber content and if our pets simply will not eat fresh foods then we can also use probiotic supplements but if we think about just supporting our pets inflammatory status and nourishing their gut biome those are two really important steps that every pet parent can think about when it comes to easy simple things we can do to improve that bowl Thank you very much for joining us today, Karen. If you would like to know a little bit more about fresh food diets as well, of course, uh, this story is brought to you by Big Dog Pet Foods, so please do visit their website. We're going to chat to you on socials a little bit more as well, so thanks again, and I do hope to speak to you in person, one of the future series. Thanks, Thank Karen. you so much. To learn more about the Forever Dog book, visit foreverdog.com.